This is a quick intro to Open Devon, the AI software engineer, and how to get it set up on Windows. So last week, a video about an AI software engineer called Devon raised a lot of interest in the development community. So what made Devon compelling was its seemingly autonomous operation and its user interface. So we've all been using ChatGPT to help us code and solve bugs, but it's kind of more of an assistant without direct agency. So agents with file system access are not exactly new. We've had AutoGPT and Crew AI, which I've covered on this channel before, but Devon offers something dedicated to software engineering. And the real evolution, in my opinion, is the interface. So actually seeing the chat window on the left-hand side and then having a terminal, browser, and editor, enabling you to work alongside the AI and actually see what's happening and interrupt or change inputs as it progresses. So Devon itself is not commercially available yet. It's from a company called Cognition, but there's other open source tools like Devica and Open Devon, which are using similar approaches to achieve the same thing. And if you look at their star history, they're both trending upwards at a huge rate. So I'm going to take a look at Open Devon and I'm going to take you through an install and a quick demo. Okay, so here is the Open Devon repository. You can find it on GitHub at GitHub slash Open Devon slash Open Devon. And if we scroll down here, we can see um, a quick demo and then we can see the install requirements. So it's important actually to pay attention to the new installation instructions. In the time I've set up this demo, they changed several times. So just be aware of any changes that might make this a little bit different, but I'm going to give you the default way to get it installed right now. And hopefully that, that helps. Okay, so first thing we're going to need to have is Docker. So make sure you get that in advance. You want to download this for your operating system. In my case, it's Windows, and I already have that downloaded. The other thing that you're going to need is Node. And to install that, you can just simply go to download and then make sure you're downloading it for your Windows system. I would suggest just going ahead and trying to get this project running if you have Python already installed. But if you do run into trouble, I would recommend uh, using uh, Miniconda. And this is the way I managed to get uh, Open Devon working successfully in the end. So to install Miniconda, you can go to the install page here and then go to download the installer and you want to pick for which version you want. You could double click mm -hmm. on the installer and I've already got it installed. We don't want to replace that right now. So Okay, so now we can open VS Code or your terminal, whichever you prefer. People are more familiar with VS Code, so I'm gonna run with that. In VS Code, the important thing we need to do is make sure that we're setting up the right environment. So let's hit um, Control-Shift-P on a Windows, and we can select Python. We wanna select Interpreter. And so if you've installed it correctly, you should now see Conda as an option as an environment here. So let's click on that. So that's the selected environment, reactivating the terminals. Okay, so now let's open up our terminal. And I've already created a folder here. So now we're going back again to our requirements. So first we wanna download the Docker image. So let's just copy this here, go back into our terminal and let's just paste that in. Okay, so that's step one. Okay, so we've got an empty folder. So let's clone the repository. So let's go up here to the code. Let's click copy. And then let's go back again here. And what we want to type is in git clone and the repository. So pull it down to this folder. So let's check that the folder is there and we can see the into it and see what we have. Okay, perfect. So one of the first things that we're asked to do is to rename this config file from the template to 
config. So let's go back in here again, see if we can find that. So we have the config, config file. So we can go over here to this button. Now let's open this folder and add it to the project. So click open folder and we're going to add this directory and then open dev. Okay, so now we can see the config file. This is an empty template. So um, we need to rename this to config.toml. We can go to API keys and then we're going to create our API key and you can copy your API key. So I'll be deleting this before the video goes live. So let's go back to our terminal and let's paste in our API key. And then we're going to set the workspace directory to workspace. So essentially what that's going to do is create a workspace directory here. So I'm just going to actually create that just in case that becomes an issue. It's in the root. Perfect. So that's fine. That's fine. Let's click save. Now we need to start with the back end. So let's go to Python pip install pip environment. Okay. So a lot of these requirements are already satisfied in my case because I have it installed um, successfully already. So let's go to the next command. Python pip involved pip. So essentially this is installing all the project requirements. You might be having trouble with the pip env approach. Some people are used to using requirements.txt. In that case, you can use this command here and it might be successful for you. Not seeing any red errors yet, which is encouraging. So while that's installing, it's worth having a look into discussions. If you actually wanna work on the project, you can create a pull request. And it's always really helpful to submit any issues that you're coming across or check if the issues that you're experiencing are previously covered here. Okay, so everything seems to be installed okay, and now we want to activate this virtual environment. You can see that in the instructions here, pip environment shell. So let's paste that in here and hit return. So now the last command we want to run is uvcorn open devon, and we want to open it up on port 3000. So this is essentially running the back end so that it's open on port 3000 so that the front end can communicate with it. Okay, so that seemed to work successfully. They've started the server and it's available on localhost 3000. Okay, so now let's open up a new terminal, a new PowerShell. Okay, so if you'll notice here in the left hand side, when we did the git clone, we have a front end that was populated here. So now we want to set up this front end. So let's go down to setting up the front end. So make sure we're in the front end directory, npm install and npm start. cd front end. So now we want to use npm install. So npm is a package manager, node package manager, and it will install all the dependencies of the front end into this folder. So that seems to have installed successfully. So let's hit npm start to run this front end. Okay, so now it's running on localhost port 3000. So let's just copy that. And then let's pop over to our browser. Excellent. Up to a good start. It says initializing agent may take a few seconds. Let's look at what's happening in the terminal. Okay. Let's pop back again. Excellent. Here we are. Hello. I am Open Devon, an AI software engineer. What would you like to build today? Okay. So 
we've got the terminal, which shows you exactly what is being run in the terminal. We have this planner, which doesn't seem to do much yet from what I've seen. There's the code editor and then a browser. Okay, so let's get it to do something basic. So can we create a Celsius to Fahrenheit converter? And now we can see what's happening in the terminal. Let's just pop over and look at our workspace folder. And you can see that it actually has created that file. Okay, it seems to have paused on the fact that it can't run node. So what's it trying to do now? So it actually found a workaround. And my Celsius to Fahrenheit converter is working. I have achieved the task goal all done. What's next on the agenda? Okay, well, let's check. So let's take a look at VS Code and see what we have. We have the workspace. So that's very basic. So let's see if we can, can you create a web page interface for this? So in this example, it actually had some errors setting up the Python environment, then it tried to use Node, but it still actually successfully created the page that I asked it to create, 40, 104. So passing the basic tests. So while I'm finding Open Devon a bit hacky at the moment, as any project is in its earlier stage, I can see a lot of potential. Just watching the agent as it works through a thought process, as it reflects, I'd be interested to see what kind of approach they're using in terms of agentive reasoning. But you can definitely see some kind of a reflection process happening, which is leading to some interesting outcomes. So usually what you have is a zero shot approach where you just type something into ChatGPT and in the first go it gives its um, best attempt. Whereas with this kind of agentive reasoning, it does its first attempt and then there's further steps and maybe other agents run in the background acting as overview or supervisors or unit testers that help feedback into that iterative thinking cycle that produces um, some good code. Don't think we're at the point yet where you're just going to let this autonomously solve a lot of problems. But if you think about a lot of the tasks that we do as developers, there's definitely scope for these things to be automated. And as it gets better with its tooling, as it gets better access to file systems, I can only see some great potential, but it's not there yet. Hats off to the team behind Open Devon. They're iterating at a great rate. If you look at their GitHub, drop into their discussions, do a pull request, see if you can help out in any way. Hopefully you found the video helpful. I'd love to know what you think about Open Devon and other projects like this. And if you have any problems with the setup, drop something into the comments and we'll see if I can help in any way I can. If you're interested in where AI and AI agents are going, please drop me a follow.